Hi, I'm Ricky. Welcome back to the YouTube Runner series. Today we're adding some quality of life changes here and there. Remember that you can download the entire project for free from GitHub and you can also join my Discord channel to get help from me directly if there's something that you don't understand. All right, so let's start. Polishing is a long and tedious process, so I'm not going to do everything. I'm just going to show you some examples of what we can do and then you fill in the blanks. The main point of polishing is adding sound effects to your game. I've already shown you how to make an audio manager. In fact, it's right here. And we have two sound effects already in our game. What you should do now is adding sound effects to every other part of the game. Like for example, when we start a new game, when we turn the page in a shop, stuff like that. Let's move on. The first thing I want to do is make the text of our current yards pop up whenever we unlock a new enemy. So let's go into the canvas and let's hide the shop panel. We can then select the yards. Here it is, yards text. And let's add an animator. Make sure to select the text and then go to the animation window. And let's create a new animation clip. And before we start, let's change the auto size from true to false. And let's say 60 for base font size. And let's see how it looks if we get into the three digits. Okay, so it's still good. Let me also change the anchor points. All right, that's good. Now let's hit record. Let's go to the 30 seconds mark. Let's go to say 100. All right. And now we can go back to the start. You can see that now it's 60, then it's 100. Then we can copy the initial keyframes, put them at the end. And you can see that when we get to 100, it gets too big to fit the size here. So we go from 60 to 77. Uh, let me actually put it a bit more, yep, more up there. I think this is good. Let me also change the anchor points. And to make it pop up a bit more, let's also copy the keyframes here. Let's put it to 25. And let's paste them so it stays at the maximum size for a bit and then it goes down. All right, so that's it for the animation. Let's also set the update mode to unskill. So even if we pause the game, this still goes on. This way it doesn't interfere with the pause button or with the NPC dialogues. And the animator, let's turn the loop, loop time to false. And let's make an empty state. And by default, the animation will be the empty one. And then we make a transition from the pop-up to empty. So it disable itself and we can set the transition duration to zero and exit time to zero as well. We don't care about transitions. All right, and now let's go in the unlock enemies manager and in here, let's add a reference to that animator. And now when we increase the difficulty, so in here, we play the animation and make sure the name is the same. Let's put the reference and now when we get to 15, we get a pop-up and that's telling us that we have locked a new enemy. Uh, it's a small thing, but it does add up. It makes the, it increases the quality of life. That's what I'm saying. By the way, when we unlock a new enemy, so right here, it's a really good place to play a sound effect. And I just noticed right now that we haven't made a single turn of our audio manager. We are only playing sounds using buttons, so we didn't need one. Uh, so while we're here, let's make a singleton. This way we also have a singleton for the audio manager in the project in general. So if you do download the game and you want to add an audio effect on your own, now you can. And we could play a, a sound effect here, like... I don't have that clip now, but you know, if you do want to add it, then you just uncomment this bit of code and you add this sound to the audio manager. But yeah, that's it for the pop-up effect. While you're here, another thing we can do is increase the yards of BIAT to increase difficulty. I set it to five before and 15 now just to test stuff. But of course, uh, this is uh, way too low. I'm gonna set it to 200, I think it's nice. All right, next up, let's open the entity type. This is the base script for our entities. What I wanna do is add a bit of uh, livelihood make the enemies feel more uh, alive and one easy way to do this is to randomly flip the sprite on the x when we activate our entity so i've added a sprite render reference and i've marked it as protected because there are some entity types 
that do use the sprite renderer. So it doesn't make sense to have two references to it. So let's cache the reference. And now in certain entity, we had a 50-50 chance of flipping the sprite. And that's it. The only thing we should worry about are the scripts that handle the sprite renderer. In our case, the only script that does it is the Orca. Let's go back to Unity real quick though. The game has compiled, so we get all the nice warnings from uh, Unity. Almost all of them are useless, but if we go to the top, you see this one that is actually useful. It's telling us that the Orca script has a value called SR, which is the sprite renderer, and it's hiding another variable with the same name SR that is found in entity type. If we double click, here's our Orca script, and here's the sprite renderer. We can delete it, and we don't need to catch it in a wake because we're already doing so in entity type. And because now there is nothing left in awake to override, we can also delete awake. We don't have to worry about entity type messing up the sprite renderer, because in start entity, the very first thing that we do is not calling the base start entity. So Orca is completely independent from the entity type script. And if we test the game, you see that we still get rocks uh, looking right, but sometimes they also look left. It's a small thing, but it makes the game look a bit more alive and it doesn't really cost anything. All right, next up, let's open the NPC dialog box. Inside this dialog box, we only have one text, which is the dialog itself. Let's shrink this up, and let's duplicate it. And we're gonna use a second text to hint to the player that he can uh, tap the dialog box to continue the dialog. We just need to set the alignment to right and down. Oops, that is not down. Oh, okay, I flipped it by mistake. All right. Make sure the anchor points are correct. And now to make it a bit prettier, we can also add an animator. Let's go to animation. Let's make a new animation clip. I call the text fade and like the name suggests, we're gonna fade out a bit the color to make the user understand that there's something that he can do. I'm gonna set it to 200. And I'm gonna copy the first frame, put it at the end. And let's see how it looks. Uh, I think it's a bit too weak. Let's put it to 160. Let's see now. Let's also select the first and final frame and set them to auto. This way, the loop time is a bit better. And let's also set the update mode to unscale. When we talk with an NPC, the time is set to zero, so we do need to set it to unscale time. And in the animator, we can double click it and set loop pose to true. This way, it loops even better. Uh, I think that's it. Let's set the data box to false again. Here's our NPC. You can see the text is fading in and out and it doesn't interfere with the actual dialog. Perfect. All right, so next up is making the shop look a bit better. And we'll do this without making new sprites. Let's select the shop text here at the top, and let me tell you about something called color gradients. Let's check color gradient, and let's set the color mode to vertical gradient. Let's copy the vertex color that is currently here, and then let's set it to white. Then here we have two colors. Let's take the top one and pass the color that you just copied. And let's do the same for the bottom one. But for the bottom one, let's select a bit of a darker, redder color. Like so. It's not a big difference, but it makes it a bit better. Monochromatic stuff is hardly any good. Following this logic, we can also make the UI here and the buttons a bit better. But instead of changing the text, we're gonna add some shadows. Let me select the panel here, also the one in the second page, and let's add a component called shadow. Let's set the x to 2 and the y to minus 2, and you can see that an outline has appeared, and the values here indicate the direction. The shadow component is a very quick but effective way of adding a bit of a 3D effect to your UI. You can of course increase the effect if you want to. Uh, you can of course choose what you prefer. We can also do the same to the buttons that we have here below. So let's select them. 
And let's set another shadow component. And you can of course repeat this effect wherever you want. Alright, next step is the options panel, which right now is really really ugly. The audio button is fine, it doesn't look too pretty but it does its job. Let's just put it in the center maybe. And this button doesn't even work anymore actually. Instead to switch a language we're gonna just change the scene. So let me add to the options menu a scene function. Here it is, scene function script. And now to switch language, we're gonna bring in the options menu, scene function, change scene by adding index. And now if you open the build settings, our current scene is this one. We have to go to choose language. So we have to add minus two. And while we're here, we can also do the same for the tutorial. Let's duplicate the button and let's bring it in the center. In this case, the tutorial is one scene forward, so we have to add one. And that's it. We can repeat the tutorial by going here. And you can switch language, that brings us to the initial scene. By the way, about the language, uh, it's true that we made a language manager. It's true that we did put the text changer to some text components in our game. I haven't put a text changer to all the parts in our game because that takes a lot of time, but it does work. So if you want to do it, the system still works. You just have to fill in the values yourself. That's what polishing is anyway. We already made all the features. Now we just have to complete them. We can close the options menu now. And last but not least, let's add some quality of life to our items. Right now, our items have a name and an image, but they don't have a description. We don't know what they do until we buy them. So let's select one of our slot panels. And the best way would be to make this uh, slot panel a prefab and then changing all the other instances to prefabs. With this way, we don't have to change them one by one. But I want to keep them separate so that you can see yourself the difference between adding a description and not having it. But yeah, for now let's just select one, let's add a button. And now inside this slot panel, we have item image, which is this one right here. What we're gonna do is add a text right here. So I'm gonna duplicate item name text and put it like so. And change the text. All right. And by default, we disable it. Let me also change the name. All right, and now in our slot panel, let's open shop item and let's make a new public void function. And in this toggle item description, we wanna enable or disable the text and the image. So let's add a reference to the text that we just made. Uh, in this case, we don't care about the text, only about the game object. And we also need a reference to the image. All right, and now we just need to toggle their active values. Back to Unity. Let's link the button function to the slot panel, shop item, toggle item description. And then let's also bring in the references. And let's see how it looks. Now when we hover with our mouse or with the finger, it shows that you can press it. And it does the description. I think it's really nice. Uh, maybe let's just change the color from black to white. I think it's better this way. And that's it. Now if you want, you can apply this same effect to all the other slot panels. And while we're here, let's also select the page that we have now which uh, is where we put all our items. Let's actually put the slot panels outside the page. And uh, let's set the page to be only for what we actually need. So just like that. And then let's put the panels back in. And now we can change the anchor points. It should be a bit better. I haven't tested this game with all possible uh, resolutions but you know we can always do three aspects and it doesn't look pretty but at least it works so that's good using the free aspect within the unity editor is not the same as actually using uh, a phone 
with a particular uh, resolution, but at least it's a good test. It's not complete, but it's a good start. So that's it for all the quality of changes that I wanted to add to the game. Like I said before, these are not complete. It's up to you now to fill in the values. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you learned something new. If you have any doubts or any suggestions about the next topic that you'd like to see, do tell me in the comments. And if you're having any trouble, remember you can always download the entire project from GitHub and you can also join my Discord channel and ask me for help directly. I'm also developing a new game right now, it's called AA. There's a teaser trailer and you can follow me on Twitter for all updates on it. All links in the description. Finally, make sure to like, subscribe and share the video and all that stuff. And I'll see you next time. See ya!